Hey, it's Dr. Lori. I'm in Plymouth, Minnesota at the Goodwill. You're going to thrift with me? We've got some cool stuff to look at. I want to start right here with these Tiffany style lamps. Okay, how do you tell if you've got a real one or uh, one that's a reproduction? First of all, the finial needs to match the base. And the base could be decorative like this base with the dragonflies, but what you really want to make sure is it's the same patinated color on the metal, and you want to make sure that you have a nice strong metal too, a nice cast metal. Um, so take off the finial carefully, it just unscrews, hold the lamp shade while you do it. You'll notice my other hand is holding the lamp shade as you do it. Put the finial somewhere where you can find it. <laughs> you don't want to lose that finial. But then I want you to be careful as you lift the, the shade and be careful as you do this and make sure you have something to put it down on. So don't just be like, oh, I'm going to hang a hold of this shade now. You know, have yourself ready if you're going to do this. Um, a couple things you want to look for. Look for the bright colors, right? Look for the consistent leading, right? This has inconsistent leading. This is thicker than this line. This line is thick. This line is thin. So you know this isn't Tiffany's work. Also, it's not all smooth. Usually this one goes up and then it comes back down. I don't know if you can see that on this side. Some of the things that are typical are the dragonflies, which are inverted. That's a very Tiffany look. And then the jewels, which are these, which are inset, but they're like cabochons, right? So they're kind of curved and uh, these particular pieces are called jewels. What do you look for? The telltale sign all the time is this. If it's a piece of sheet metal and it's not a piece of cast metal, if it's thin like a sheet of metal, you know you don't have a real Tiffany lamp. Sure, you're going to look for marks, but those aren't the only things. I want you to look for quality. This is a nice lamp. There's nothing wrong with this lamp. And this one, and this one in fact, does have a market value of about $75. So if you can get it for less than that at the Goodwill, that's great. But it certainly isn't a $15,000 Tiffany lamp. So that's what we're looking at. Okay, I'm going to try to put this back together. So underneath, watching your eyes, putting it in the, there we go. And then the finial goes back. And make sure you screw the finial all the way down, but not so tight as you might actually move the cast metal. And you're good. So that's a nice find if you find it low enough. This one's about $75. The one next to it is very similar. The one next to it has larger jewels you can see here, but it does not have the matching base or the matching finial. So they put this shade on this base and this finial. This is a 1990s base and finial. And then you've got, of course, um, an, um, an earlier lamp shade. These lamps are made sometime in the 1980s. Notice plated. You see this little, these little grooves in the glass here that you see here? That's called plated glass. Um, but value on this lamp is probably closer to 50 bucks. Okay, nice to see. Let's see what else we've got. I see some furniture. So, let's see. China cabinet, not great. <laughs> this table is big, but it's got some damage. You can see the rings. Those rings are hard to get out. It's not the best, not the, we're kind of wobbly, so I'd leave that. I like the cribbage table. Oh gosh, big squeak. Sorry. I like the cribbage pit table. This is a nice gaming table. Um, and you know, this is, um, of course, for mica. So for mica, it, while it's an old style um, in terms of a material, it, it's very durable. Uh, 40 bucks for the cribbage table. I think that's a little high. <laughs> but it is a nice table. It even got some old playing cards in it. Playing cards can be valuable. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. All right, I'm going to move that in. Get ready for the squeak. <laughs> it's a little high, but nice. Um, Let's see. Oh, everybody can use these. This one is nice too. It's a little banged up, but all cedar inside of this, in, of this um, cedar chest. This is a true cedar chest, and that's a nice piece. And it still has a nice smell, so it's going to repel those bugs. <laughs> um, and then if I close it, you can see it's hinge topped. You can see that it has, it's dates from about the 1930s. How do you know? Applied ornament is very typical of the 1930s. And it's got a replacement, a replacement copper um, lock and key. The keys are not usually here, but they're not that difficult to open. A lot of people just leave them open. There's that. So they want $149.99 for that. Way too high. 
way too high on that. I would have to leave that at 199, 149.99. So, um, but that's okay. I mean, you know, they they're trying, they're thinking, well, it's an antique, and and some people might repurpose it. But I would say, with all of these inclusions, abrasions, scratches, this is a lot of work. You're going to sand this down. Um, but it is fully cedar inside. What do I think it's worth? I think it's worth 65 bucks. So. I'd go lower on that. And maybe, you know, if they're trying to move furniture one day, you could ask for, um, you could ask for that. This, I think, is great. This particular piece, this particular piece warrants um, some more. This is a, a nice piece of, Earl, of Victorian furniture. This piece is, in fact, a vanity. Um, this particular vanity piece it dates to about the 1920s. Uh, between 1910 and 1920. A couple of things that I really like. First of all, you have candle stands. These are, of course, for jewelry. Candle stands are just this little shelf. Here and here, you put your candle, um, if you were making up at night kind of thing, or washing. And then basically, you have the little drawers. You have original knobs here. The original knobs are nice. But this is really what everybody's looking at. They're looking at, of course, the mirror. And they're looking at this element which is a nice inverted scroll work at the top. It has a loss area. That could be fixed, though. That could be fixed. Um, but this particular curved and small diminutive ladies table is really quite nice. The legs are nice, too. I like the shape of the legs. And that piece they want, 129 I think it's probably worth 250 so it's worth 250 they want 129 you know maybe you can get that reduced a little also notice there's a beveled mirror which is typical of it and it has its original hardware so that's unusual you don't usually have original hardware um, a nice serpentine skirt that's called a serpentine skirt where it's curvy this curve right here is nice I like that I like that a lot but you're looking at about 250 for that and yeah it needs a little bit of Murphy's oil soap needs a little bit of care, so you might want to get some moisturizer there, but nice solid hardwood early. That's really an antique, more than 100 years old. Let's keep going. So as I make this turn in the furniture aisle, don't ever pass up a child's rocking chair, ever. I don't care where you see it, I don't care what condition it's in, don't pass them up. They're always a good value. This one is beautiful. You have to be careful of getting this tape off Look at that stencil. That's a beautiful stencil. This piece is rock maple. This particular piece probably dates to about the 1960s, but it's really a beautiful example. It's in gorgeous shape. And here is what the tag says. It says $18.99, not even 20 bucks. So there is no loss on the arms. There's no loss at all. Usually it's all white here on the arms when the oil's on the hands. The spindles are nice and tight. They don't need to be re-glued. Um, you don't have any chewing from pets on any of the um, rockers. The, the stretcher, which is this bar across, is beautiful. This is turned on a lathe. This is in such good shape, $18.99, $19. And then particularly beautiful is, of course, the stenciling at the top. This is gorgeous. <laughs> Value on this, $125 retail. So for $18.99, pay the people, get it in your car, never pass it up. Here's another thing you should never pass up at a Goodwill or a thrift store, globes. Globes of any type, you know, and basically they'll say, oh, well, you know, it's, you know, it's wrong and, and the, the countries are wrong and it's so old and this and that. This one is a very famous, Repoglige globe, and these particular globes are made by very famous cartographers, made in the United States. This one is really terrific, and this one is in this free standalone um, moons and suns, uh, sort of planetary stand in metal. It's really nice. Uh, the Repogel globes, the Repogel globes with the copyright. You want to look for them. And this piece, really beautiful. What's beautiful about it? First of all, the equator line is nice and sharp. A lot of times they're not nice and sharp like this. Also, all of the colors are still very, very specific. Now, if you look at, at a place like, of course, um, if you look at a place like Africa, you can tell from these different 
of course, countries and their names, the time period for these globes. This one's really in good shape. And here's China. And of course, we're moving. It's the world classic. It's a 16-inch diameter globe. So that's a big globe. Um, you can see that North America has a little bit of fading on it. You know, but this is in beautiful condition. If you compare North America, the colors, to South America, you can see the difference in the fading, probably in the sunlight. This was probably the area that was in the sunlight. But this is beautiful. They only want $39.99 for this. I'm going to tell you, all day, every day, these go for $500 online, especially with the base, with basically the stand. So this is a real bargain on the road. I'm finding them for you. So maybe the Dr. Lori Cruz will take you to a new place on the globe. That's what I'm looking forward to. We all can travel together. That's going to be fun. Maybe the Caribbean, somewhere warm. <laughs> so um, here in Minnesota, I'm looking through, of course, the furniture area here at the Goodwill in Plymouth, Minnesota, and I love this chair. I don't love what they've done with the upholstery. It looks like it's a vinyl. I don't love that, but I do love this mission-style rocker. It's a beautiful mission-style rocker, and you can see the gorgeous, this, of course, is tiger oak. And tiger oak has this nice representative um, grain that you really can't miss. It's beautiful. It's got some decorative elements here, too, of these nice big um, oval elements. Very typical of the mission time period, 1910, 1915, um, 60 bucks. That piece is also a real bargain. My gosh, this piece easily $250. So that's a gorgeous piece as well. Um, it's in good shape. I mean, this stuff is in beautiful condition, and that's really important, especially for these old antique pieces. But you're finding true antiques here, and that's pretty amazing. Me, I'm not big on rocking chairs. Here's why. Hips are too big, <laughs> so it's not comfortable. You know, I like a little bit more room in the chair, but, you know, that's my own fault. But this, this is going to be very, very strong right up against your hips. So if you're slender, it's going to be comfortable. If you're a little bit hippy like me, not going to be that comfortable. But I think it's beautiful. And just to look at it, yes, I think it has to be reupholstered. So that's just sometimes you got to do that with these pieces. Let's see what else we got. I'm looking for solid hardwoods, and I'm finding antiques. So solid hardwood would be oak would be maple, would be cherry, would be, you know, whatever these might be. This piece is a Broyhill piece. And you know how you know? It's kind of easy. Broyhill, right inside. Open the drawers, look for the name brands. Broyhill, Ethan Allen, and such. This is a nice piece. Maybe you're going to find a Drexel Heritage piece. But this piece is nice, and it is solid hardwood. They're not making this anymore. So this is the other thing about these vintage pieces. They're not making them like this. They're taking a picture of a piece of wood and pl plastering it over your desk. This is $29.99. So 30 bucks, you could have a nice, you could call it a, a sofa table. You could call it a library table. It's got two nice, um, uh, it has two nice what are called bat wing. They're faux bat wing because you don't have a, a they're reproduction bat wing because you don't usually have the little key. But faux bat wing, really nice. Um, I would say value on that easily is 150 bucks for this table. That's a nice Broyhill table. That's going to last for a long time. And a lot of you DIYers out there might want to take it and actually repurpose it. Um, some of you like to repurpose it. I like the look of the solid hard wood. But a lot of you are, are masterful in what you can do in making something look more contemporary. I think that looks great as it is. Yes, it needs a little cleaning up. But at 30 bucks, you can't beat it. Worth 150 so that's a real bargain, too. I'm looking for original works. So how about watercolors? Yeah, how about that? That's a beautiful piece. Signed here, under 89. This is nice, a nice use of watercolor. Notice when you, they show you, i got to lean this here a minute. Notice when the artist shows you the brushwork right in here. So they're showing you actually the water. That's difficult to do. Doing it as trees, but you can see the line of the trees. That's really nice. That's a telltale sign of an expert in watercolor. So this is definitely going in. And this is a Nielsen frame. They were popular in the 80s. And speaking of watercolors, I like this piece. Oh, even though it's big, I like it. I like this piece, too. I don't think this is the same. Uh, same person, same artist, 1995. So it continues to do watercolor from the late 80s into the mid 90s. That's a nice piece, too. You know, I'm not crazy about these figures. I think they're a little big. See how nice it would be if they weren't there? But again, the figures are there. 
And this is a European scene. This is a nice one too. Uh, typical 1980s, uh, 1980s, um, you know, the pink Nielsen metal frame and the pink and the, and the darker pink. So I'm not crazy about that. I would probably, you know, can make it a little bit more contemporary by putting different mats. But I will say that for the watercolor itself, that's a beauty. What else have we got? Oh, look, a letter N. <laughs> I'm not N, so I'm leaving that there, but other people would probably take that and resell it. But I'm not an N. How do I get this back in there now? No, you need an L, you know, L. <laughs> and then what else have I got? Oh yeah, there's my jackpot, <laughs> right here. Look at that, beautiful. A Miki Kamada, number seven of 50, a woodblock print, Japanese, dated 1964. Beautiful work. So this is a wood block print from Japan. This piece, this piece of artwork is wonderful. How much do they want for this? They want $10.99 for this Japanese wood block print that's nearly, no, more than 50 years old. So that's gorgeous. How much do you think this is worth? Major artist, low print number, low print run, Number seven of 50, there's only 49 others of those and you have number seven. And of course you've got the cipher for the artist as well as of course the title here, done in 1964. What do you think it's worth people? Here's your real bargain, I told you about artwork. $1,250 is what this is worth. That's going in my cart. So that one goes right in there. And the, look at the frame, the frame's in great shape. Wow, beautiful for $10.99. 10.99. Did you see it? 10.99 to make 1,250 bucks. <sighs> That's a beautiful real bargain and a gorgeous work of art. Wow! I found some great things at this Goodwill in Plymouth, Minnesota. Thrift with me. I'm gonna find you the treasures.